I'm removing the uh, injector rail on this uh, non-turbo 2003. The turbo ones have a different intake, but the rail should be the same. The difference is gonna be the injector type. Uh, also the attachment here, this is one of them. And there's another one with a loop like this. I'll try to find the car in the junkyard and film that and set it in the video. The two important parts when doing this job is first to release all fuel pressure. Even if your car has sat for one, two weeks without running, you will still have fuel pressure is going to explode into your face when you disconnect it. So the first thing will be to, it may be a different location, just to depress the actual valve. The second thing is to clean the area very nicely. The uh, Injector seals need to be perfectly clean. We are going to grease them with Vaseline. That's a very important part too But they need to be really dust free any tiny dust speck That will stay into the uh, into the seal That will just cause a leak. So that's critical So I would recommend doing this one in summertime and maybe get a water hose and spray here Where the injector sits in there. There's a small gap clean nicely put some water on it not on the wires but on the ejectors there and make sure it's clean and when you place it back crystal clean all the rubbers or the gaskets inside there around there crystal clean make sure you use some quality gloves it's not good to keep the uh, gasoline on your hands also i keep my car also the outside the garage because we will have Vaseline leaking and I don't want to have it smell inside the garage but I don't want to smell it have it smelling during the job is gonna be right in your noise here is very uh, very uh, annoying and very unpleasant so I will just once I free the uh, gasoline from the rail I will just spray some water around to clean it and then I will keep doing the job Again, before starting the job, don't forget to buy this. Do not, in any situation, do not try to put back the uh, injector O-rings without having them greased with Vaseline. Same for if you have this sex sensor, if you disconnect him, any, everything, the rubber, the gasket, O-ring, you put back, smear with gasoline in and out. Otherwise, you will break it, you will chip it, and it's gonna start to leak. It's not always necessary to replace the O-rings. Uh, mine are uh, 15 years old. I didn't replace them and they didn't leak. But it's up to you if you want to. First step to release the uh, gas. I will just cover it with some uh, plastic here and just press down with the screwdriver gently. that's it not much more than that but the fuel rail still has quite a bit of gas in it so I'm going what I like to do instead of letting the gas go out by right there when I remove the fuel rail I just like to undo this sensor it's not, it's not really critical but when you are going to uh, uh, I, I like to remove the sensor and try to catch the gas but it will still leak so Either way, or when you are disconnecting this line, that's the fuel line, it's gonna leak through there, but then I just wash it out with the hose. If you have still the uh, still have the cover, just undo the torx uh, bolts and remove the cover, unplug the connectors. We will need to unplug this guy here, and it's pretty tricky and sometimes it breaks. Watch out for the wires, don't pull too hard on them. Uh, you may want to depress try depressing from underneath. Uh, with a screwdriver but it's gonna break probably it doesn't matter if it breaks uh, the clip breaks uh, you may just um, uh, it sits in there it doesn't really bother me if you have a uh, end, uh, end rail uh, sensor like this one or it's different this sensor just undo the sensor plug post the whole uh, wiring on the side Safely. Now for this connector type, what you want to do is there's 
two clips, green clips is just one of them, but it needs to be depressed on both sides, up here and underneath. Probably the camera won't see. There is the same thing underneath, so I need to reach with something like this. Flat screwdriver, bolt underneath and at the top. So the way I'm doing this is just you may also find something securing green clip outside here. Mine broke. You just post it away. Try to. It's very small and it doesn't really matter if it's there or not. So just depress here and it should stay depressed just like that. And do the same underneath. Underneath it's harder to see, but to make sure, double sure, just maybe get a flashlight or a mirror. It stays like this underneath as well. Both should be staying depressed. And that's all we need for this connection. When you pull the uh, fuel line, the uh, line will just slide out from there. Don't worry, there's nothing else that's catching it. You see, I did press uh, the top clip, but the bottom one, the lower one, I couldn't. I tried to use a tool like this. It just doesn't stay clipped in place. What I will do, I just keep it like this. And when I try, I start pulling a little bit and I see it moves a little bit. I'll try to depress again underneath. Or maybe I will just try to keep it depressed while pulling on the rail. It's a bit tricky, but uh, it works. It should work. Then I'll do the two 10 minute bolts. And now we are ready to remove the rail. And this is the trickiest part. It doesn't seem, but if it's the first time you are removing it, which is not for me, the injectors, because of the O-rings, are really stuck in there in the manifold. Really, really stuck. And you need to make, make some... Uh, price something like this um, they can move like this the rail can move a little bit like that so maybe just start to pull it from one side a little bit and then move along and uh, see how it moves but it really needs some force in there and at the same point don't forget to have these clips depressed actually like I said mine should be moving pretty easily it's better not to Pull it once, just with a, good, with a big force, just to try to remove it at once, because the the rings may be stuck in there. You may lose them, so just try to do a movement like this, back and forth, just a little bit like that, and start with one side. Again, uh, it seems stuck in uh, mine. Seems also stuck but it definitely is going to be harder for you for the first time when you're doing it for the first time so um it seems to be free on one side one end here okay now it's free i can see that the earrings try to slip out so now i don't want to force on the line let me just pull a little bit just like that i'll try to press again the clip under it even with your fingers you can reach it it's important not to pull on the line itself it's a bit fragile and uh, you don't want to um, cause any breakage let's see if it's first in there Still not depressed. I'll try to depress it now as I moved a little bit the rail away just a little bit. I will try to depress again the clip underneath. Okay, so I just cannot get the underneath part of the clip to stay depressed. Uh, keep in mind that this part with green clip will stay in place, it's really just the line that we slide out. So I'm going to try to remove it like this. See, just watch the line, the line should be go back should be moving away from the rail a little bit you can see it and just start pulling on the side like this all right okay so i get idea uh, now we are going to spill a little bit of gasoline but if you lift it right away you can keep the gasoline inside the rail and just uh, dispose properly so um, yeah it seems like you just can't depress the top of the clip not the bottom see how it looks so probably if you depress only the top of it it's gonna be enough but again uh, I'm just uh, just uh, 
not saying that's the way you should do it and basically it's going it goes the same way when you put it back in place you see you should see the top of the clip will just pop pop uh, back in place when you install everything you see you need to see the clip popping back in place and that's secured so i'm just draining a little bit the gasoline as you can see there is quite a bit of oil uh, remaining inside the fuel rail so uh, you want to spill it on the floor and something like that If you need to further more, uh, maybe remove the, um, the injector, maybe you want to send them for cleaning. The way it goes, you need to undo these Torx, three Torx bolts. Carefully with those, maybe stuck in there, so use the proper Torx socket and don't force on them. And then all these parts, including the small um, securing clip, it basically just sit in there, you just slide just tap against uh, this uh, metal part here to slide it off and when you put back in place the things you notice the injectors have a small groove on the side on each side at the bottom so this thing will slide into this groove same for this one has a groove slide it into the groove again don't forget vaseline for all the uh, o-rings and there's also an o-ring inside the clip so grease it as well and that's all before installing back clean really really well all the areas that come in contact with the o-rings uh, really clean it with a pa clean paper then i will pass my finger make sure it's clean then i will smear it with some vaseline all around here and also around the place here because when you are placing the uh, railings back you may touch with this o-ring around here so make sure it's crystal clear all around when you are about to place back the uh, rail when you just manipulate around, make sure you don't touch with the o-rings around the various parts around the uh, intake manifold. Notice the clip is depressed and uh, just go very slowly, carefully just uh, match the holes, but really try not to touch the o-rings around to not get any dirt on them. And uh, because of the Vaseline, this will slide in very, very easily. maybe not very very easily but it slides in and what I want to do now what I like to do is just to try to without removing it from there just keeping a small movement like this I want to move a little bit the uh, o-rings inside so if there's any particle of dust or dirt I just want to move the o-ring to free it from that particle just a little bit in and out, in and out at all points here the injector have some plate but the way they sit in there is just that you will be able to match the holes for the bolts and don't forget at the very end to depress the clips here to have them pop back in place maybe you want to push on the line a little bit or press downwards at uh, the bottom so make sure the clip is back in its place and now it's secured This is the other type of connection, so that's much much easier. So just undo everything, the bolts, disconnect the wires, pull, remove it from there, just force and just tilt it over. Nice. Just flip it over and then you just remove these guys here, three of them, and then this will free up once you remove the plate. There's a plate, right? this plate along you, you push it force it a little bit and then you disconnect this guy from there and you are good to go uh, this is another type, type of connection here uh, I think this car is later on uh, 2005 6 and up uh, this is the uh, sorry a lot of noise around here this is the turbo engine but again I think it's the later years had kind of a screw connection uh, again, don't forget to release the pressure even if you are in the junkyard. I was just helping someone on the car on the junkyard here and he said no, no, no problem. 
and he got gasoline right into his eyes so the pressure can stay there for weeks and I have to say also there's another situation when you just shut off the engine I will warmly recommend you not to disconnect this with the engine still warm just wait one day to cool it down because even if you release the pressure with the engine warm up the gasoline is still warm it's still expanding you will get pressure in there even if you just release it so if you want to disconnect with a warm engine keep this keep this valve depressed keep it depressed and while it's depressed no pressure building building up disconnect everything every uh, you may want to undo this uh, sensor or whatnot so remember these warnings right? this has a small torque screw I need a 1515 Torx it's a very small Torx bit and uh, you really need to have that in your set I can say it's a little bit tight because it's uh, rusted in there so don't try with anything else get a good bite a good good bit or a So that's the first step, you notice it's kind of hard to turn so you better use a wrench not a screwdriver or whatnot. Okay that's the one, don't skip, uh, don't lose this guy, keep it on the side properly. And then you notice there is a plastic clip here where the screw goes in and it has a side tab right on the right side as you look to the car. So that tab you can go either from underneath with your finger and just lift it like this it locks underneath and with one hand and with the other hand just slide this clip from there so basically it goes in there it has kind of two holes and it has this side clip and you notice it has a bump that's where it locks in just keep it lifted with one hand and then slide this guy from there it should be easy to slide it's just maybe there is dirt in there um, Obviously when you place it back you notice there's another hole where the screw goes so you just place it back like this and push to snap it in place just like that. Um, that's all basically that's everything you have to do there's nothing else to do. Let me see if I can remove it no, not now but uh, once this is done right so keep it uh, don't lose it it's important once this is done the line is free to move this plastic part here stays with the rails It's connected to the rails so again that's the clip that stays with the rail again the rail will have uh, one or two ounces of gasoline about 30 50 millimeters careful uh, this guy uh, maybe you can no just leave it there and that's the fuel line uh that clip uh, i'm not sure where i put it but that clip actually hang that you slide off hangs here on this slip so that's how it keeps the line connected to the rail that's pretty much it guys uh, again gasoline smells uh, try to drain it first and not inside the garage again uh, watch your face use google and uh, that's uh, that should be it make sure you don't pull on this line Sometimes you can break down there, so be careful. Thanks for watching. Just uh, throwing in if you care watching, uh, I try to clean the injectors. I think it's a good idea to try cleaning them at some point. I'm not saying this really works, but it's just kind of may, may help a little bit, uh, improving a bit uh, MPG acceleration. Uh, this is what I use uh, a hose. Uh, I had to use a clamp. I really recommend you use Google's and the face mask. The reason for this is that the pressure from that tiny bottle, uh, I use um, carburetor cleaner, um, use only these things, these types of carburetor cleaners do not use um, anything like uh, um, lacquer thinner or stuff like this. Um, no solvents, nothing. This is uh, how I put the thing together use clamps to make sure that you keep the pressure it doesn't appear but there is a really nice pressure in there and my hose i didn't put that screw on it and it blew into my face and i bred that uh, that solvent so it's not fun 
Google face mask stuff like this uh, then uh, I would recommend try most of the times I will really prefer uh, back washing it back uh, spraying into the injector this is the end of the injector I didn't remove the basket by the way and this cleans the basket as well a downside with this uh, so right now the tube is connected to the uh, exit uh, where uh, the spray is actually into the car side uh, I do recommend you clean everything and you, you use a hose that's really really nice and clean inside because when you uh, clean it backwards you may just force the breeze inside through the nozzle of the injector even though it has very tiny holes in it it may force the breeze inside so you don't want it. but anyhow and this is just a normal flushing uh, forward flushing but I really prefer backwards I don't know why it kind of feels doing better uh, this is really if you want to try I'm not saying the results are great on stuff like this, but it's just a fun thing to do.